Australia is about to have a trial to test welfare recipients for drug use. I work in one of the areas that government is running the trial. It's called Bankstown, an area of high crime and immigrant communities. Now, it's sometimes seen as an ethnic ghetto, and that's, it's shown a doubling in the last few years in people who are unable to look for work due to their drug use. Now, this test, their payments will be quarantined for only for use for food and essentials. If they fail twice, they must join a treatment plan for their drug use. Now, I regularly sign certificates for patients who can't look for work because of drugs. Now, some of my team members, they go to homes delivering noodle packets because the clients have already spent their social security payments on amphetamines and cigarettes. They got nothing left over for food. So this plan sounds like it might be useful, right? Well, no, well certainly not when it comes to many of my medical colleagues. The idea has been met with fierce protests from many groups, varying from the Royal College of Physicians and the Australian Medical Association and psychiatrists, including the former Australian of the Year, Professor Patrick McGorry. Their message is that addiction is a brain disease which requires medical treatment. This is true, but only kinda. Chairman Mao probably saved more heroin addicts than anyone in history by threatening to kill them. By some estimates, 20 million Chinese stopped. The same method would have had no effect on, say, other illnesses like tuberculosis or syphilis. Now, nobody's suggesting such drastic methods, uh, you know, suit now, right? But it does show that addiction is not just an ordinary illness. Now, perhaps doctors aren't the know-it-alls that our credentials might imply when it comes to addiction. Now, Canadian neuroscientist and a former heroin addict, Professor Mark Lewis writes, Addiction is best seen as a result of learning pathways being hijacked. It's more of a bad habit than disease. Lewis writes that addiction can only be beaten by the alignment of desire with personally derived future-oriented goals, something he reckons the medical model is just not equipped to do. Another psychologist from Harvard, Gene Heyman, thinks addiction is really a special kind of voluntary activity in people with poor coping behaviours. He studies the most effective treatments in detail, and he found that the best outcomes are in cases of doctors and airline pilots. They're reported to their professional bodies, and then they're closely monitored over a number of years. Their recovery rates are high because they've got a lot to lose in terms of jobs, income, and status. Now, throughout the criminal justice system, offenders whose minor crimes overlap with personal drug use rarely go to jail, but are instead referred to strict treatment plans. I regularly write such plans for magistrates when my patients fall, fall foul of the law. Now sure, some go through the motions and start using anyway. But for many, the mandated system and prospect of punishment provides a strong incentive to engage in treatment. It's often then that they realise the impact of their actions upon loved ones. Look, I'm not saying welfare recipients are criminals and they shouldn't be treated as such. But fostering a culture of mutual obligation can be really quite difficult in the setting of drug addiction. Now, the government taking up the role of bad cop may in fact help teams like mine who can then focus on treatment. Many of my patients have intractable problems and are in the severe range of mental illness. The government program will not affect their treatment tra trajectory. But there's another group that in addiction speak are categorised as being in a state of pre-contemplation. Their addiction may not yet be that serious, but they, they, they themselves don't see it as a big problem. The issue does not become apparent, at least to the user, unless they have something to lose, a job, a partner, or access to children, for example. It's this set of users that the government might help by shifting them to the contemplation phase of recovery. Compassion and a tolerance for repeated failure are essential ingredients in treating sufferers of addiction but so is some form of contingency. They need to have something to lose. The public are showing great support for the trials against the protests of many medical groups. I think it's another issue that's pitting over-educated elites tied to an establishment way of thinking with ordinary people who are relying on lived experience of addicts they know. The government's plan is no panacea, but its principle of preserving mutual obligation and a scepticism of the medical model is sound. I'm Tanvir Ahmed, 
If you like this video, please subscribe to Rebel Media.